the saw, dude. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So after Monday's two and a half hour long video today, I kind of wanted to do something a little bit more simple because I sort of need like a mental break because that one took so much work and I'm really happy with how it turned out, but it just was a lot. So today we are going to be talking about something a little less serious, um, still definitely I mean, could have legal ramifications and whatnot, but kind of a lesser known influencer. So I think we'll just get right into it. Okay, so this TikTok is from a few months ago. And honestly, like when I first saw it, I was like, oh, this could be interesting. Maybe I'll potentially do a video about this. So I'm gonna show you the TikTok. Okay, bear with me, I'm sick, but I'm also sick of this girl's shit. So if you don't wanna get scammed, keep watching. Now I have to preface, there were a few red flags that I ignored totally that's my problem but this is more of the fact that this girl is scamming so many other girls i've had so many messages about her scamming people of a lot more money than she did me and i just really want to stop this from happening to anyone else so it started off on instagram basically i got one of those sponsored ads between stories and it was for this instagram store that looked really cool that had trendy sort of stuff so i went over to that account it had like twenty thousand followers so i thought it was legit followed it as I sort of like looked at her stuff over the next like week or so, she kept posting um, feedback. So people would say, oh my God, receive my top, love it. What a confirmation that this is a legit account. Anyway, the first red flag, and I'll label all the red flags as we go. But the first one was that she was labeling everything as vintage or dead stock. And straight out from the start, if I looked at her feed, I knew this was not all vintage dead stock stuff. Like you could tell it was from AliExpress or like sheen quality stuff like it didn't all look that good but the skirt that i actually did purchase was um it looked vintage she only had it in one size whereas other things she kept saying she had a small medium large which kind of is a bit odd if it's vintage and stuff um but this one she only had a small so i was like okay maybe this is actually a legitimate vintage skirt which would be cool um so i bought it and the way to purchase through this instagram account that has twenty thousand followers and lots of reviews was through bank transfer to her which is kind of okay because a couple of like quite a few Instagram stores do that. So I was okay with it, um, which is another red flag. And so I transferred her whatever. Um, bought this on the 26th of March and it's now the 2nd of May and she has not posted it. There's been no communication. I went away for a little bit. So I waited till I came back to check if anything's been posted, if anything's arrived at my house and there hasn't been anything. So I went to go message her, but the account's gone. When I thought I've definitely been um, scammed straight away but then I saw she had a backup account so I went and followed that and messaged her there and her response was very like blase like oh I'll look into it for you she didn't she hasn't um, anyway I did a bit more investigation because she had her personal account linked to this main account that had 20,000 followers that got shut down and her name was Cassidy Penny so I went to that account and it looked legit as well just from the outside like it it was a private account but it has like a legit photo of a girl it had like 700 followers and like lots of pictures apparently posted so i thought it kind of looks like a legitimate person I looked her up on facebook she hasn't been active since 2019 so whoever this scammer is is actually using someone else's identity to link to their account to make it look more legit to then yeah it's just it's really fucked up so anyway, putting that whole situation aside, yesterday I was just on Instagram and another sort of thrifty, vintage account popped up as a sponsored ad. So I clicked on it and I actually realized that they had some of the same items as this other girl's account. And I was like, these are actually vintage pieces that you cannot, they wouldn't be that many multiples of, I assume. And they're both accounts based in New Zealand, which is where this initial account was based. Um, and I was like, this, this is too much of a coincidence. I don't know how this is working. Anyway, this original account actually had a Depop link to it. And on that Depop, there are thousands of reviews, but there's also a lot of really shitty reviews of people saying they haven't received their items. So this girl's a serial like seller and scammer because she's selling on Depop. This account that had 20,000 followers, she had a backup account, plus this other account that I believe is the same person. So I've alerted my bank um, to dispute this transaction because she's using a fake identity to do this fraudulent behavior stuff. 
um, and she's literally scamming people of so much money. Um, and so that's the thing, I don't really care about the cash that much. I only pay $30 plus shipping, so it's not a huge deal. But it's the fact that I just hate this behavior. It's so icky and it's just, yeah, I don't know. I feel like if this can help anyone to not purchase from her, that's it. That's all I can say. So when, I think that video was from a few months ago anyways. Now, of course, I'm like, wait, what? But anyways, so I started going through the comments of this video to try to find the scammer that was involved in the thrift with Jazzy Depop, which I looked it up. That user does not like exist anymore on the site and a bunch of other people were saying like oh thank you for making this video i had just ordered from them and now i'm scared i'm not gonna get my order i was able to cancel it and get my money back and whatnot which is really good but then a lot of people were commenting all these other usernames that this person would go under and was basically just like a clothing scam then i found one comment that said yeah the person that you're talking about also made something called I think it's pronounced Shiko clothing and Rouse clothes clothing and basically it's just like a drop shipping site. So I went on those sites, yeah, Roust, I believe is how you say it. They are gonna have apparently like a season four or something drop. Like there's absolutely nothing on the site. And then Shiku, everything's like sold out. So I think it's pretty safe to say that neither of those sites are going to update or anything like that. But then Again, went through more comments and whatnot. I found two names and someone said, oh yeah, this is a girl named Brianna Ellen and Josh Mittendorf. So I had some names to go off of. So I started doing a little light go. Sorry, my camera just died. So anyways, after I had a couple names, I was like, okay, awesome. Now I can do some light Googling and figure out a little bit more about these people because the comment said something like now they're traveling around and whatnot. And I tried looking them up on Instagram, not too hard because that kind of doesn't have a ton to do with what we're saying or what we're talking about right now, but we'll circle it back around to it. I wasn't able to find an Instagram or anything, not a big deal. But anyways, so when I Googled them, I came across an article about something called the Porta Presso. So we've created uh, the Porta Presso. Essentially, it's a fully portable uh, espresso coffee maker. And so what it can do is it grinds your fresh beans, uh, compacts them, also at the same time, it can also boil your water and heat um, and also froth your milk, leaving you with that perfect uh, cup of coffee. I was like, okay, well, we'll just kind of see what this is. So I found the website that it's on. It's on Indiegogo.com and I'm gonna read you the concept of this product. So it is the first truly portable espresso coffee maker that grinds beans, boils water, and froths milk. And it's created by Brianna Ellen and she's from Auckland, New Zealand, which is based on a lot of the comments and whatnot that I was reading from that TikTok that I showed you. Yes, this was a New Zealand based person that was doing this kind of clothing scam. And then I also found a Reddit talking about them, about them and essentially how like, yeah, don't order clothes from them because you more than likely won't get them. So it's funny that we started with clothes and now we're gonna talk about this Porta Presso, which is kind of funny, but anyways. So this Porta Presso, not a bad idea. And from the looks of it, it looks like there's also an app that maybe goes with it that you can use, which is kind of cool. So right now on the website, the Porta Presso is still under the concept phase and it hasn't even really yet gone to the prototype and now a bunch of people are upset because this was created back in like November of 
2017 that Brianna and Josh came up with this. Now, Brianna at the time was 18 and Josh was 20 when they came up with this whole concept, and which I got to admit, it's a really cool idea. Like, this is something I would actually like having. But they were able to collect close to $80,000 from crowdfunding. And on the Indiegogo site alone, they have $55,152. And then someone claimed that they're using those funds to just basically travel right now. And at the time in, let's see, this article is from 2021. So this is kind of old news, but still interesting nonetheless. So the article that I was reading was like, yeah, they're getting a lot of heat now because people that invested in this product aren't getting updates. They pretty much were just ghosted. Like they thought that at some point, they would be getting some kind of a prototype or like a first version of it just to kind of see how it's going and whatnot and it kind of sounded like you could contribute to different levels and based on which level you donated to you would get different things from this like startup essentially, but nobody was getting it. And so a bunch of people were asking for their money back. They didn't want to be involved in this anymore. They're like, okay, enough time has passed. They felt like they had, like I said, just been completely ghosted. Brianna came out and was like, no, this was never put on the back burner. They were allegedly going to go to China to see what's happening with the production and try to make the product better better because their initial idea, while it's a good idea, they realized it had some flaws and some shortcomings, which of course, I mean, if you're going to make a product, you're going to have to go through like a lot of redesigns and whatnot to actually make it happen. Kind of like, you know, Theranos. That never got off the ground because they couldn't make a working prototype. So that's kind of like Portopresso here. They couldn't figure out a way to make this product an actual reality. So then backers were getting upset and were like, yeah, I want my money back. I was promised this. I never got that. I um gave you so much money. Why have I not seen any results? And one person even was like, yeah, I travel a lot for work and I kind of go to remote areas. So this is a product that I would absolutely love to have. And I think they donated like 300 something dollars and just never got anything in return and now actually this crowdfund has been closed because nothing was happening with it. So this is from the article from back in 2021 where Brianna finally said, we underestimated the complexity of this project at the outset as we were quoted New Zealand $70,000 and an estimated timeline of approximately six months. We had never done anything like this before, nor do we have an engineering background, so had no reason to question whether or not this was attainable. Come on, girl. Upon com completion, the total cost of this project will have cost us well over a million New Zealand dollars. That being said, we are 100% committed to the delivery of this product. She claimed that they did have a functioning prototype, but mm, skeptical. Now, a like business kind of commission, kind of like the Better um, Business Bureau, I guess, in America, did get numerous complaints about this project and that this company maybe was not valid and was totally fraudulent. Um, but other than that, I really don't know where this stands today. I don't believe they've like given back any money. I think they've just taken it. For all we know, they could still be working on it. I I mean, like all this stuff is very old news. So, and plus I feel like, you know, living in America, this wasn't maybe a big deal here to us about this, but yeah. Now on the Indiegogo site, there is an update by Brianna, but it's from 2020. You can go through and read all about it and whatnot, but it really sounds like this port oppressor Presso just is not gonna happen. There's also a 128 comments on this crowdfunding campaign. Once again, on Indiegogo.com, you can go look at it. Um, just pretty much about people saying, yeah, no updates. Like, hello, is anything happening with this? Um, Brianna has commented back to a couple of the comments, but they're only comments that are like, thank you for the update. Could you share with us some details about this new design? And then she'll comment back to those. But where people are like, hey, like, what's going on? No comments. But that is essentially who Brianna and Josh are and that's a controversy with them right now everyone's just like yep they're just a bunch of scammers so that is it for me today thank you guys so much for watching um like I said a little bit lighter of a video but I just sort of needed a little bit of a mental break from the two and a half hour video from Monday but thank you guys so much for watching and I'll be back on Friday with another video bye guys